Tropico 3. Yeah, I know I'm really late with this review, but I've been playing it lately, so you're getting a review whether you like it or not. Tropico has apparently been around long enough to have a third installment, so I figure it warrants a look on the Xbox 360. And since it is grasping so frantically at the crown of King Sin game, it deserves at least a little attention from a lowly freelance, read unemployed, games reviewer like myself. In the simtastic world of Tropico, you take the role of El Presidente, although in practice you have more to do with a city planner than you do with an all-powerful dictator. You spend your time placing various buildings Sim City style in order to generate revenue for your little island to keep its inhabitants happy. You can exploit the natural resources of your island, such as oil, lumber, and minerals, or you can exploit the natural beauty of the island and whore it and its people out to the tourists. Either way, financial income is the name of the game. First thing you'll notice about Tropico 3 is that it is much easier to learn and play than most of its big brothers in the genre. With a simple interface and button layout, out, it is very easy for someone who's not exactly looking for a mind-wracking experience to enjoy themselves. And the game is not without its painstaking details, you just have to know where to look. If you want to know the individual needs and thoughts of each of the island's inhabitants, a simple press of the button will make it so. And interacting with civilians is not just a spectator activity either. Via the secret police, you can issue orders to make the civilian have a, quote, accident, bribe the peon for their vote in the next election, or even have them gunned down like a dog in the streets. There's certainly enough things to tweak in the game to make the most OCD of us satisfied, from adjusting the value and salary of a specific building's workers to a very robust ruler creation system. The game offers a personal touch on nearly everything you can think of. But placing buildings and messing with your adoring public is not the only thing you'll be doing. As the ruler of your slice of paradise, you will be issuing edicts. Edicts are orders and laws that affect various factions and people on the island. You can issue standards on pollution and even issue an edict allowing same-sex marriage. Truly a sandbox game at its finest. So what's wrong with Tropico 3, you ask? Not much, really. I mean, the large pieces of HUD can frequently get frustrating when trying to play some of the larger buildings. The game soft crashed on me a few times, and it seems like after a certain amount of time spent ruling, your country will spiral into debt no matter how well you've managed it. So with not much going against it, why does it not receive a perfect score? Well, because it really doesn't do anything new or special. Sure, it has a fitting soundtrack, and the visual details are fairly impressive, especially given the scope of the city you can make. It is a simulation game at its most basic. And while that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just not something that's going to keep people playing for hundreds of hours or draw in new fans of the genre. If you like this genre, then you should at least give Tropico 3 a run. It kept my attention fairly well, and I'm happy that I gave it a try. But I'm just not sure it's worth the $40 admission price. But then again, I'm a cheap bastard. Tropico 3 gets three fine Cuban cigars out of five.